It's so hard to step out on your own. Um, specifically, I think as a female in a what can be quite a machismo salsa scene, okay, um, is one of the most difficult things there is. Um, to talk about a really hard topic, I think females are wildly over sexualized in this area. I think that we don't have as much of a voice. I think that a lot of times, if you see a couple teaching, it's the male who's talking the entire time. It's the male's name who comes first on the agenda. Um, and generally speaking, right, like a lot of people find have this common like misconception, but there's some truth to it, that you have to have a male to advance, right? And I just Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's episode of the To The Feet Podcast. I'm your host, Terrence Greer, and I'm joined today by the wonderful Miss <laughs> Michelle Garcia. Hello. Hey, so um, if I'm not mistaken, you are the director of Balante, mm-hmm. which is a salsa fusion females dance team. Correct. Right? Hey. Yes. Um, you were born in Ann Arbor, Michigan, mm-hmm. currently residing in Boston. Yes. Hey. 10 out of 10. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> and uh, so right now we're at the Richmond Salsa, which had the festival where you are not only teaching, but going to be performing tonight as well, right? Correct. Hey, yes. how, are, how are you doing today? I'm doing really well. They That's keep me so busy, awesome. but I prefer it that way, so <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Awesome. I'm very yeah. curious. I want to, and I guess I want to start this out. I'm very curious to hear about your childhood growing up in Michigan. What was mm-hmm. that like? It was wonderful. Okay. I feel like I had a magical childhood. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel, I mean, as you talk to more and more people, I think I... Um, I recognize how lucky I am to have grown up in such an awesome place. Um, It's a university town. It's super diverse. It's very open, very liberal. Mm. Um, And so perspective, the arts are very appreciated. Um, And so it was something that I I don't know if I would have had this opportunity if I was in a different town or city. Um, And my parents are wonderful. And so they told me from a really early age that whatever I wanted to be, I could. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome. Um, yeah, it just gave me the foundation and the base to do anything that I wanted. Mm. Um, and they put me in dance when I was really young. My mom was a dancer, and okay. she used to teach um, a little bit more recreationally, but she taught jitterbug, actually. Okay, that's from New Orleans, what yep. I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I was, I, I used to live in New Orleans. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, that's a awesome. Ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know jitterbug? I know of it. I interviewed yeah. a dancer who did jitterbug. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I kind of started with um, just her love of dance, and mm. so she put both my twin and I oh, in. Um, I do. Okay, wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she put us in dance really young. Um, he didn't take to it quite as much <laughs> <laughs> as I did, although he still likes to dance around. Okay. But um, but yeah, so I, and I stuck with it. I started when I was five, and okay. I stuck with it. Wow. Yeah. I, I, so dancing for a, a long time now. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess I'm very curious to hear, you know, how important was music in your household growing up? Music? You know, it's really funny. Um, it's not as... Everybody loves music in my house, okay. but it wasn't a fundamental, it wasn't something that was on every day. Okay. Um, we are an incredibly athletic family, okay. so that kind of took precedence over music. Mm. Um, and so we would have music on in the background once in a while, but it wasn't like a lot of people in the salsa scene particularly come with families that music night and day, right, cooking right, all the right, time. Right, right. Um, and it wasn't, we didn't have it quite as much because we were always watching a game or going to soccer practice okay. or whatever it is. My mom's a super big athlete as well. Okay. Um, and my brother, who's now a sports journalist, which awesome. is where it comes from. Okay. Um, so he and I were put in sports from a really young age mm. as well. So I think we focus a little bit more on that over music. Okay. Um, so my background comes from all of my dance training and classes oh, in music. Okay. Um, and so we were... We were required to both um, do multiple instruments. Okay. So we both did. So there was music background. So it's you, not that there. You what, used to be a busy man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. My mom and, and my dad, they both stay really busy. Okay. So we're used to it. But well, um, oh, okay. Yeah. Where are your parents from? Can I ask? My parents are from Cali. Okay. So enough. Right, mm-hmm. California. Yep. Yeah. So they have that kind of like fast, not like New York, but it's still like though. yeah, yeah, a good lifestyle. Um, they are from the Bay Area. Mm. And they moved to Michigan. My dad got a job at U of M. Okay. So we were, my brother and I were born in Michigan. Okay, so I know. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm very curious, you know, you said you started dancing at a young age. Is, um, is your love for it now, is that something that was kind of forced upon you? Or did you actually start to enjoy that? Yeah, um, that's a good question for all dancers, I think. I 
adore dance. Okay, awesome. <laughs> I love it. Um, I've made it my whole life, my whole career. And um, one thing that I was scared of when I made it a career is a lot of people say anything in abundance can turn a little bit sour. I understand. Too much um, anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so because I've loved it my whole life, I wanted, that was the thing that I always told myself, like if I got to a point in my career when I wasn't enjoying it anymore, then I would need to kind of change tracks mm -hmm. or rethink something. Um, but I love it every, like every day more. That's awesome. <laughs> so that hasn't, yeah, I think it's once you have a passion for something and you love it so much, it really carries you. Um, and there are days where I'm like, you know what? I think I need to watch a movie. I need to sit down <laughs> um, and maybe have like a day off. But yeah. other than those like recharge days, um, dance has definitely been okay. my life by choice. Mm. Um, I mean, I was put in it young as my brother was, but they, you know, after a few years, they told us, give it a solid chance. And after a few years, you're kind of on your own. And you get to choose what you want right. to do. Um, just to give us kind of like a basis of where we start from. Um, and that's when he stopped. Oh, okay. And he said, yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> so he kept on with sports. Um, I originally kept on with soccer. Okay. So I was on like a competitive soccer team. It's like an unknown fact. Um, and a competitive like dance um, scenario until I was 14. Oh. And my parents told me that I had to choose and I cried that day because <laughs> they told me it was going to be one or the other because okay. they saw that I was getting quite serious on both tracks and they knew that the, the time commitment high school college and right, plus was right, going to be right. you need to focus on one um so I didn't talk to them for about a week okay I cried every day for about a week wow and then I chose dance because okay. it was just I felt like it was my favorite and I understand. where my heart was yeah yeah um I got so many questions for you. Yeah. But let's just start <laughs> Hopefully with Hopefully, so thing. many answers. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm curious, looking at where you're at right now, mm -hmm. how has your past experience in classical training, how has that mm -hmm. influenced your dancing now? Oh my gosh, that's such a good question. Um, tremendously. Okay. I will say also to piggyback, but a little bit of a twist on the last question. I feel sad saying this, but I did not enjoy classical. Okay. I, mean, I did not enjoy ballet. Being honest, mm -hmm. Yeah, that was something that, and it was not ever forced on me. It was something that was highly encouraged okay. <laughs> <laughs> from my dance teacher, um, Annie Durbin, who mm. is in, she's also actually in Boston now. Okay. Um, but I grew up uh, dancing under her direction um, at Dance Theater Studio. And I adored her and still do. And I would tell my mom and my dad that I was just, ballet wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. I was a little more like spunky. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and ballet was slow for me. And so um, I had a big talk with her. She was nothing but supportive always as well. Um, this is why I'm, I'm really lucky. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. It was a bit of a wake up call when you come into the real world as an adult. Um, but she told me at the end of the day, it's your choice. Ballet is one of the strongest foundations yeah, that you can possibly right, right, go right. into the world with. And what she told me was this promise of you won't have to stick to it. You won't have to be your career, but if you do it, it will open up doors for every other genre. Right. And it was so right. And I don't know as an eight year old why I listen, you know, I don't know how I ended up listening because as an eight year old, you just want to do what you want to do. Of course. But I did listen. Um, and I think it was probably the smartest thing that I've ever done. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's it gave awesome. me a, a pretty found, like a pretty great foundation. Okay. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, if you can leave a like and subscribe, that would be amazing for the channel. Let's get back to the video. Um, you know, I guess you, you kind of already said that you were a full-time dancer, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, for myself and many others who have full-time jobs, you know, yeah. to clock in and everything. Yeah. What is, what is it like, you know, having dance as your full-time job? Yeah. Um, it's a really big dream. Okay. <laughs> I get like goosebumps. It's, it's a really big dream. I mean, like anything else, there are always pros and cons. Mm, of course. Um, but I knew from a pretty young age that no matter what I did, I didn't want to have the nine to five okay. lifestyle. Understand. I didn't want my life to be about work necessarily. Um, which is funny because it, it, it my life is a lot about my career, but it feels like a passion and a career. It doesn't feel like work. Okay. That's awesome. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of to use the same word, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of effort, mm -hmm. um, but I never get up at the beginning of the day thinking like, I don't wanna do this, I have to be there, I have to work under this person. Um, so it's it's a very different lifestyle. It's like um, you're every day working towards, I guess your goals, that's My something goals. that you truly yeah, are totally. passionate about, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yep. Um, the pros, a lot of pros is that you have your own, um, it, 
in my particular case, because I'm an um, entrepreneur and I um, run my own company and I have a lot of solo work, I run my own schedule, yeah. which is, it sounds phenomenal and it is in a lot of ways because you get to schedule it your way. Um, There's a lot of responsibility to it, right? Yeah. Uh, the con of it is that the motivational aspect, you don't go to an office where you have somebody to check in with. You don't have a checklist. You don't have you. a deadline. Um, and it's like an incredible amount of... Um, motivation that has to come within you um, because you're running your own show. Yeah. So at the end of the day, right, even if you go into a team practice, you get in there and these, you know, you have 15, 20 people who are depending on you to teach the class, to push them, to give them technique. When you walk into a studio and you have to rehearse for the almost like a solo, it's you in the silence of the room mm. and you got to put, you got to keep pushing and there's nobody to, to yell at you, you know, whether good or bad um, and, and to keep you pushing. And I think that that's the hardest part mm. about it. Tell me what yeah. um you know at this stage in your life you know what's keeping you going is it is it your love for it it's absolutely okay. it's my love for it okay. mm -hmm. and every time you reach a goal it feels so good um. and you you realize that the sky is really the limit and you realize that you're never in the best way you're never gonna get to necessarily where you want to be because if you want to be here and you get there. At this level, you want to be here, yeah, right? Know, it's like, right? yeah, it's climbing a literal, it's like an endless ladder. I believe it. Um, which is, if you if you accept that, it's great, mm. right? Um, because you're always, you're always reaching for the next thing. And so I think that hunger to constantly be better and constantly push and show, you know, yourself what you mm. can do um, is, I think that's the motivation. Okay. I'm very curious to hear. Tell me this. Um, how... How did your parents, I guess, influence you, you know? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. they, I, I, go, go yeah, no, that that's a good question. <laughs> um, I really adore my parents. They um, they come from a very different background, mm. um, very different lifestyle. Um, they both had very difficult childhoods okay. that aren't easy to talk about. Um, and they had to get out of a difficult situation and they had to do it themselves. Right, right, right. Um, they're both in academia. They both have, they got their PhDs. They basically rose above and beyond um, <laughs> their family background. Um, and so they, incredibly intelligent. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, the whole family yeah. kind of has high standards. Um, they never put that on me. They never put, you know, an academic like bar um, on me. And they always told me that whatever you do, do it with all of you. Okay. Um, and work as hard as you possibly yeah. can. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Um, they don't really, they're not monetary people. They don't mm. care how much you make. They want you to be happy. Okay, that's, that's awesome. Um, yeah, but coming from people with such hard work ethics because they didn't even have connections, networking. Sometimes they didn't have necessarily anybody to support them. Mm. Um, and I had everybody to support me. Oh. So, you know, they, sh they showed me that if they can do it without it, you, you have to keep pushing, okay. especially if you have that army behind you. Mm. So that support system is, yeah. is, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> Tell me, uh, you know, I'm very curious to hear, um, you know, you, I believe you took a trip and that's kind of how you got introduced to that yes. dancing. Yes, you did your research. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, I guess I'm for wondering, where did you go and, yeah. you know, what was it, how was it? Yeah. Um, so my, I did go to college. Okay. Um, I went to the University of Michigan. Okay. And I got my bachelor's degree. Wonderful. And, um, and, uh... I actually didn't get it in dance. I started off, um, I'm going to give you the abridged version. Okay, I started you. off at a performing arts college in Chicago as a dance major. Okay. Um, and the environment I didn't love. It was a little bit more based on Chicago, or just the university, or it was um, it was in Chicago, but it was a performing arts university there. Oh, okay. Um, yep, it's called Columbia College of okay, Chicago. Okay. Okay. So, um, relatively new to things, and I think they have a ton of great resources and a lot of cool people. But my personal experience was that it was a little bit more focused on um, competition, a certain type of body. You had to mold something, okay. and I wasn't looking to fit any mold. Okay. I was looking to do my own thing um, and grow in the way that I wanted to and have whatever body I wanted to. And you know, it was, it was a quite a sh like strict, like tough ship. Um, so it wasn't really for me. Um, and so I decided to go back to um, Michigan mm -hmm. and kind of think about what it was that I wanted in dance instead of following somebody else's rubric, right, right, basically. Right, yeah, and it was yeah. a really, it was a really hard decision to leave because they had the tools there, they had the connections there, um, they could hand do jobs there, but it, I didn't love it. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, I decided to go back home 
unfortunately, I was in a, um, a pretty bad car wreck. Okay. And I was out for a while. Wow. Like seven bones, wheelchair for a while. And so the really? whole, yeah. And so I had to take some time off of dance um, and consider what else, which is another thing that I think is so incredibly scary about this career that you take one wrong turn, um, something happens to your body. And you have a lot to think about because your body is your, it's your work. I saw one of, I've spoken to other full-time dancers and mm -hmm. something that I feel a lot of people don't talk about is, um, you know, I guess the, the physicality yeah. of dancing. It's not, You yeah. are essentially a, a professional athlete in some, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Seriously. Your Absolutely. body is your money maker. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's your everything. Yes. Every day you need it. Yes. Um, and so one thing goes wrong, wh whether it's dance related or not, um, you, you no longer have that, that foundation. And, a, you don't and have a portion of it like a, a car accident yeah. can, yes, mm -hmm. It was a really, really scary wake up call. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but it kept me pushing. Mm. So I went, um, back to school and I've always been really interested in linguistics. So I actually okay. got my bachelor's degree in Spanish linguistics. Okay. Um, loved it. It was really interesting. That's awesome. But when I graduated, I still just wanted to dance. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I was like, we're full circle. Okay. Yeah, it took me a few years to kind of um, go through rehab and all of that. Um, and I was just really determined to do okay. it. I didn't really want anything to stop me. Um, so I ended up... Well, the, well, yo, sorry. Going back to that time, yeah. you know, what kept you going? Your love of dance like, and during that rehab, trying to get to yeah, it. Yeah, it was... It was um, it was, it all comes back to a love of dance. Okay. Um, it's so hard to describe the passion that you have for it when it's something that you've, when it's something that you've known your whole life um, and you love it, it's, it feels like there's a huge part of you, of not only of your life, but a huge part of your heart missing when you don't get to do it. Okay. Um, it feels like your freedom and it feels like, you know, what, and I have so many things that make me happy. It can't just be one thing. Mm -hmm. You can't have all your, you know, eggs in one basket. Right. Um, so many things outside of dance that make me happy, but it is a soul kind of um, passion. Okay. Um, and so it kind of, as soon as the, as soon as you note the absence right away, as soon okay. as you can't do it. Okay. And so I think it was, um, I would never wish a car accident on anybody, but I think it was that that really woke me up to tell me that I, you have to do this. Okay. Whether Anything. it's your career, whether it's right, because for those, for that year that I couldn't do it, oh man. there were a lot of tears. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it was a really, really, really hard time for me. Um, and, and you realize, um, not necessarily that you've taken it for granted, but you just realize the importance of it, the you value know, of it. Right. You don't know what you got until it's yeah. gone, right? Mm -hmm. I understand. Yep. So yeah, about, I think it was eight months out of the car wreck. I was getting pretty antsy. Um, and so I decided to study abroad because it was for my program anyway. Um, it's so funny. It was a requirement for my program, but I love studying abroad. Okay. <laughs> um, I ended up doing three study abroad trips. Okay. Fair so, enough. um, yeah, so I studied abroad, um, in, it was in Chile that time. Okay. And I went to like maybe one or two classes. It was more like Zumba and they had like a little bit of salsa right, in it. Right, so right. I wasn't entirely yeah. introduced to it, but I was just introduced to the, the music. I, of course, had heard of it. Um, and it's funny because as a Latina, um, my parents are mixed, so okay. mixed half and half. Um, but again, our, culturally, we weren't raised that way. Uh -huh. um, they were both born here. And so it's like the music, again, circling it back to the music foundation, it wasn't as strong in me as it is for a lot of families. Um, yeah. And so I really got introduced more to it when I was studying abroad. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and I ended up, I, I dabbled with it, but it was like a Zumba, like a, like a Latino mix I that I really it. loved. Um, came back, went to school. In my second study abroad trip, which was when I really got into it, oh, um, because which, I went to was actually, it, was, oh. it was in Spain, okay, mm -hmm, in Sevilla, the south, love Sevilla, hey, okay, phenomenal um, place, and yeah, there was a there was a little club there um, that we you know a bunch of us decided to go out for like a dance night, mm -hmm. and the vibe there was one of the happiest oh, things. Man. Like it's just so social. Everybody was kind. Everybody had a connection, whether you knew them or not, whether you spoke the language or not. Right, there were people from all over the world there. Um, it was quite like an international hub there. Okay. Um, and you just realize it, it was something that I couldn't do necessarily with ballet. Okay. You don't really uh, go right, out right, ballet right. dancing, exactly. right? And right. so as much as I love so many sap, jazz, tap, hip hop, I've done um, many and I love them so much, but there's a there's not the social aspect right. of it, which is what made me fall in love because it it's like a full, fully rounded genre. It is. Um, and it gives you the opportunity to go out and meet new people and just have a connection with anybody. Um, and they say like dance is an international language, of right? Of course. And so you can connect with anybody. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very curious. Tell me, tell me about your beginner stage. And so, mm -hmm. and so I guess um, in Spain you were doing salsa or? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Okay. Salsa. Yep. And so it was just kind of like stage. public classes here and there. It was nothing serious. Okay. Um, when I moved back to Ann Arbor, it was when I was like, 
I really need this in my life. Okay. And I started looking for training. Okay. And um, the next year I moved to Boston to continue training. Okay. Yeah. Well, tell me about your beginner stage. Oh my gosh. Um, I can't say that it's like anybody's beginner stage, okay. but I can say that I was quite lost. Okay. Um, the reason I say it's not exact same is because I had the foundation right, of right, right. 15 years of classically trained dance. Um, and so I had like, I knew how to spin, I knew how to, you know, ground to the floor. And there were, you know, things that I, it, was, it gives you a big foundation of, course, of yeah, knowledge. Yeah. Um, but there are so many things that you have to break, uh, right? I uh, say so you probably have some bad habits maybe or what? <laughs> yeah, well, it's nece- it's good habits in one genre don't necessarily right. translate it's two different to, dances, right? Two different yeah, things. Yeah, totally. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily call it a bad habit, but I'd call it kind of a, almost like a useless habit for another okay, genre. I understand that. Um, in ballet, you have to be incredibly pulled up. Um, you have to kind of like tuck the pelvis a little bit. It's very yes, it's it's a lot stiffer. Mm-hmm. There's fluidity in it, but it's it's quite rigid in right, some ways right. um, as a generalization. And so the the biggest thing for me was that you have to pull up all the way your straight legs, and you have to just really really be as tall as you can. Um, the first, I'll never forget it, the first salsa class I took when I came to Boston, um, it was Aaron Davis, he's a great teacher in, um, from Boston, but he looked at me and he was like, why the hell are your legs so straight? Okay, okay. <laughs> and I was like, because that's everything that I knew, you right. know, once you do something for 15 of years, course. it's stuck in you pretty hard, mm-hmm. and so I had like a little bit of a, nobody believes me, but I had a difficult transition, basically just breaking out all, all of, of the course. things that I've learned, um, and I tried to make it to a point to, to not get rid of those things, but to put them under a different category in my head, uh-huh. right? Because okay. you don't want to necessarily not ever be able like to do that again, right. but you need to be able to adapt, right? So, you know, if I go to a hip hop class, I'm not going to use a technique that I would in a salsa class. Exactly. You have to, you know, you have to adapt to what you're doing. Right. That was the hardest part of my beginner stage. Real quick. Um... Yeah. You know, so you kind of highlighted some of your challenges that you went through. Mm-hmm. I'm very curious to hear from you, um, you know, for someone else out there who may be new to a dance yeah. or anything, and they're, they're themselves are having difficulty adapting mm-hmm. to it, you know, um, what words of wisdom or advice could you give them? To- I love this question. Yeah. Um, as a teacher, I think you always go through, well, first of all, as a teacher and a student, because um, teachers are always students. Of course. You go through two different perspectives of understanding that, it's frustrating like and there's nothing there's nothing around that like mm, you can't right. get around the learning process of being frustrated uh-huh um i think the two things to keep in mind one consistency is key i think in anything um but without consistency and a strong work ethic you'll stay around the same place right a lot of times people are like oh you know it's it's so wonderful what you do. You got to travel and perform and meet these people. And it is, it's truly wonderful, but it comes with a lot of sacrifice, right? A lot of time and and the consistency that it, that it requires, um, is draining in a good way. Sometimes it's hard, but it's draining in that, like, um, you can't stop. You can't stop practicing, Mm. you know? Um, and they say, I think it's something like to be, masterful in anything you have to do it at least 10,000 right, times right, and if yeah, you yeah. sit back and think about hours. how many right exactly if you sit back and think about 10,000 hours <laughs> that's a lot of work <laughs> that's a lot of work it's a lot of time that seems, it seems obvious you put that much time in anything yeah you mm-hmm. be good at it yep exactly um, so I think consistency is one the other thing that I think is arguably more important um, and I've learned this as a life lesson um, in every single area um, linear or sorry progress is not linear okay hey, progress is up. like up and down and twisted and around and right, sideways and right, upside right. down and it's probably one of the most frustrating things in the world because you can train something consistently and have a really bad day um you can you can land perfectly the doubles for three days in a row and those next two days you can fall out of every turn mm-hmm. it's just it's your body it's the day it's the process of it it's and so sometimes it's i would say overwhelmingly easy to get discouraged um or to stop unfortunately okay when you have a bad streak or you have a day like that or sometimes you have a damn month like that okay. where you're just not getting it. Um, and it's, it's really hard because it can, um, mentality is difficult. Yeah. You have to be like mentally pretty strong. Um, Definitely. Yeah, and so it's, it's easy to say, hey, well, you know, I, I might just not be fit for this. Um, literally and figuratively, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think it's being able to mentally push through something like that. And in those in those moments, the best thing that I can say is um, reach out. Reach out to your circle. Okay. To the people closest to okay. you who know you the most, who are going to support you the most. Um, reach out for informa- inspiration. Reach out for encouraging words. Reach out for somebody who's going to say 
something that you don't want to hear. Okay, the truth, right? The or truth. What, right? Yeah, what don't go mean? for the people who are just going to sugarcoat you and tell you you're doing everything right, right? You know, right. reach out to somebody who's going to say, well, I don't think you're being consistent enough. Putting and in. take that, you know, and then turn it around. Okay. Yeah. I'm very curious. Tell me, um, you know, I guess, tell me about what led you to the idea and the creation of Pagante. Mm-hmm. Oh, how, wow. How did that come about? Yeah, that's, um, wow, that's such a long path. Okay. Um, I never thought, <laughs> I'm like, should I say this? Uh-huh. I never thought I was going to be a director. Okay. I didn't think it's what I wanted to do. Mm. Um, I think something that you, you don't have to be, but I think I've had good experiences with directors and I've had bad experiences with directors. I think that's kind of everybody's, um, it happens for everybody. Um, and I just, I think I ended up thinking that to be a director, you had to be kind of a hard ass. Oh. Um, you might have to yell at people once in a while. You might have, and that was something that I was never interested in. Mm. I felt like that was so much pressure and I love to learn. And I love to have somebody else push me that I didn't really think that um, that directing was for me. Um, and I feel a little bit like it kind of fell into my lap. Um, and as I kept pushing, I, I would work for a bunch of people. I, you know, I, I co-directed and I just ended up realizing that I had um, a lot of creativity that uh-huh. I wasn't letting come out um, because I wasn't pushing myself. And I was okay. kind of taking the safe road by not stepping out on my own. Um, and that's. It's so hard to step out on your own. Um, specifically, I think as a female in a what can be quite a machismo salsa scene okay. um, is one of the most difficult things there is. Um, to talk about a really hard topic, I think females are wildly over-sexualized in this area. Understood. I think that we don't have as much of a voice. I think that a lot of times if you see a couple teaching, it's the male who's talking the entire time. It's the male's name who comes first on the agenda. Um, and generally speaking, right, like a lot of people climb have this common like misconception but there's some truth to it that you have to have a male to advance right and I despise that um that idea um not because I think females are better I think that we should all be incredibly equal um the true definition of feminism right and so I think I just got this motivation that I needed to push myself creatively create a creatively wise how do you say that you got it creative. i needed to push my creativity okay <laughs> um one <laughs> um two i didn't want to have to wait for somebody else to lift me up okay. specifically because it was a man right okay. and so um i didn't want to have that on my back i didn't want to have to like i didn't want to be an, a, in a shadow no, right um and i also really wanted to show how much women can do whether it's you know with a group of women as a solo artist as a woman you know i just want to show how much we can do together yeah. um and i think all of those you know pushing myself and wanting to kind of make a stance in this area really forced me <laughs> um to to create my own company, to kind of step out and create my own thing. Yeah, I had no idea where it would go in the beginning. (laughs) This is super terrifying. Tell me, uh, I'm I'm very curious, tell me about um, that first year, you know, Mm -hmm. creating it, what was that like? Mm, I imagine that was probably the most difficult time. Literally the scariest thing there was. Yeah, I was like, all right, well, we're doing this. I had no idea if five people were gonna show up to the, Mm. you know, to the audition. Um, But whatever it was, I was gonna be grateful for it and push, right? And that's all, most things start small. Grassroots are grassroots for a reason, they're hard. Um, and you, you gain momentum as you go. And I actually, um, I love Boston. Boston community is so great. And they've literally been nothing but welcoming to me from the very beginning. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm lucky sometimes okay. I feel, I mean, I'm very blessed. Yeah. Um, and hopefully it means that I'm doing something right to have the right, you know, people. I think you attract what you give. Mm. Um, but I, I had enough people behind me, um, that I had the courage to do it because okay. that helps. I don't think that we can do anything entirely alone. I believe it. Um, whether it's like family, friends, your significant other, whatever it is, you need that you need your circle. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think, I think Boston really helped me, but I, when I first launched it, I, oh, I was so scared. <laughs> I'll tell anybody, I was so scared. <laughs> um, I, I don't have any shame in that. Boston, I was like, yeah. oh my God, like, what if I can't do it? I mean, I had like the natural fears and doubts. Yeah. What if I'm not good enough? What if I'm not fit for a director? Cause I didn't, you know, this directing wasn't the lifelong goal. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I fortunately had a pretty good turnout. Um, from what I, you know, I was like, I expected like five people. Okay. Um, and we had, you know, about 30 people at the first audition. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So the, the first um, team, it was two teams and it was 25 people. So that was like the first year, which was last year. Sounds crazy. Um, 
and the coolest thing about it was the the oh my gosh we just like hit the ground running okay i feel i get the goosebumps when i talk about it because i'm so grateful for for the community for how we've been received for Uh um the work that my students have put in um i feel pretty proud about like the work that i've put in um yeah, we had auditions two weeks ago. You we got had some upcoming as well, correct? Um, yeah, we just had auditions actually. Okay, okay, okay. We're starting the new season tomorrow. Okay. We'll fly back home to Boston. We'll start tomorrow okay, night. Okay, so nice. Um, and there, uh, the submissions were up to seventy people for auditions this year. Wow. Yeah, so we've basically okay. tripled. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's wonderful. And now we the co- the company in total is about fifty three people now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we have four levels. Um, and for a second year, I feel great. Hey, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's cool. So real quick, we have ten minutes. Left, okay. Right? Yes. I want I want this this next ten minutes kind of to mm-hmm. be of value to our listeners. Mm-hmm. So check it. out. I'm very curious to hear. Um, okay. You know, what are some things that you've learned now mm-hmm. um, about running a dance studio that you wish you had known when you first started? Oh, that's such a good question. Um, okay. I think the very first thing that comes to mind without having to think about it is know that it's not going to be flawlessly smooth. Okay. It's just not. Um, I'm a little bit OCD in organization <laughs> and wanting, I'm a people pleaser. I want everybody to be happy. And um, I think we have to try our best. I think it's a lot of work that's required of whoever's deciding to run something because right. you're, you're, you know, you're running a business for other people. You have to care about it a lot. Right, right, right. Um, but I think that, I think I'm quite hard on myself. I think most of us are, but I think that um, I went into it with an expectation of, you know, kind of a, not necessarily flawless, but as close to flawless execution Mm -hmm. um, as possible. And I think that so many things went well, but what I learned was you can't beat yourself up if something isn't flawless, Uh Um, right? There are going to be little like snippets of things along the way that don't work out. And that's probably the best thing for you because it directs you to what will work out, right? You learn pretty quickly, you know what, this is something that totally didn't work for me. Um, How can I redirect it? And so you just, you, you learn from the mistakes. And I think that I, you know, going into it, I think that I had like been a little bit easier on myself um, in making the mistakes because now that I've made some of them, um, you know, and it can be something as small as like an organizational app. Like, you know, do I need an app? Like, how do I organize this many people? How, you know, and, um, or it can be big things like how you put a choreography together, how you teach the choreography, you know, how, you know, what's your timeline to reach out to promoters or to, you know, to get back to that, whatever it is. Um, I think there's a big learning curve and I think everybody should be, um, cognizant of the fact that it's okay uh-huh. right to make the mistakes and that the learning curve is there for a reason mm. um and everybody does it yeah yeah definitely i understand mm-hmm. that I think um, that's the biggest thing yeah I'm, I'm very curious um and i guess getting more so back to dance let's say we have um for beginners out there you know mm-hmm. maybe new to it yeah um and they feel like you know they're not progressing they're not really getting better they're stuck in that beginner's rut mm-hmm. what it's a great rut you, to be in <laughs> <laughs> what uh what advice could you give them or maybe like what do you what do you how do you help out your new new students and everything you know yeah to progress i think to progress I, there's so many ways to answer this question because there's there's so many good things that you can do um the first thing is circling back to the mentality it's mm-hmm. it's you have to accept um that progression isn't linear right. um if you're if you're too stubborn mm. and you expect to just get there that day or the next day or whatever it is and then you call it quits after that, it's it's you you either need to change your mentality or the harsh reality of it could be that it's not necessarily for okay, you. Okay, so no. Um, so you have to, I think mentality comes first. Mm. Um, right, because with the correct mentality, you can you can you know you can get anywhere. Yeah. But it, you have to have it. Yeah. Um, so I think mentality comes first, and after that, I would say something super important um, is cross training. Okay. I don't, oh, yeah, okay. mm-hmm. I don't think I could believe in cross-training more, right? Because it's... Hey, cross-training meaning uh, different dance styles, you mean, right? Uh, different instructors within the genre, okay. different genres, different dance styles, different cities, different backgrounds, different cultures. Okay. Like, you, you need everything um, to really advance because mm-hmm. maybe something, maybe something from ballet is ne- is going to help you. That's that thing that's going to help you in salsa, right? Maybe, and I think cross-training is just, you never know what you're going to get. If you're under the same person, I told my students actually this last week, I was like, please don't just train under me, Uh right? Because, um, and there are a lot of companies out there and they have their own reasons that, you know, they want only training underneath them. Um, I am not of that mindset just because 
I don't have all the answers. Right, I don't right, have all right. the backgrounds. I don't have all the training and I want you to cross train with as many people as possible. Um, try to make sure that you're training with, with people who know what they're talking mm-hmm. about um, and who, you know, have, have dedicated a lot of time and have yeah. a good hard work ethic because that way you know you're getting good training. Right, right, right. Um, but cross training is huge. Of course. Uh, and so I think like stuck, if when you are stuck in a rut, I recommended this to my um, students last week. Somebody came to me and they said, I can't, um, the particular example was um, she felt like she couldn't get out of kind of a stiffer body mm. in salsa and I told her go take a hip hop class go take a heels class go take a funk class okay. go take a house class yeah. do something that forces you to get out of your body because that's the style of it um, even more so than salsa I would say uh, and that way it'll hopefully translate back when you when you cross train enough mm. yeah I'll continue that question then mm-hmm. you know for someone who is an intermediate and mm-hmm. they want to get to that advanced level yes what does it take for them Oh, that's hard. Um, I think it takes recognizing um, that you don't know as much as you think you do. Mm-hmm. I think something that happens once we get, um, once we pass a beginner level. Like a know-it-all I, maybe? Or? Mm-hmm, not necessarily a know-it-all, but, it, you know, in, in that direction that of maybe? like, yeah, ego. <laughs> Check your ego no, <laughs> before you get to the door. Like not even at the door, right? <laughs> and so that's like a mile before okay. that door, right? And that's... Oh my gosh, I'm, uh, I think that's huge, regardless of who you are. I don't care who you are, right? right? We all have to check it um, because we'll get nowhere with an ego. Sure enough. Um, yeah, and so I think like knowing um, w- once you get past that, I think it's a little bit natural to be like, all right, like I got this. Like I have enough right, knowledge right, now, right. but check yourself and mm-hmm. know that there's so much more. So always be a student, right? Yeah. Always mm-hmm. be a student. Always be a student. And that way you'll keep pushing. Right. Um, and what's funny is what I always realize is, generally speaking, um, beginners love the fancy stuff. Of course. Right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fun little turn yeah. combos or the flares or the styling or whatever it is. Um, the advanced dancers want the basics. Okay. Right? Because when you get there and once you've learned all these things, then you want to, you realize I actually want to look good doing these things. I want to respect the foundation. I want to respect the technique. And so what I would actually recommend is that as a beginner, respect the technique and the basics first. Mm. Styling is an additive that comes later. And if you actually take the time to go over the foundation as a beginner, your styling will look a hell of a lot better than it will if you don't take that time. Fair enough. Yeah. Real quick, tell me, um, give me one tip Mm -hmm. that can make anyone a better dancer immediately. Ooh, <laughs> your questions. <laughs> um, attitude. That is ooh. Big attitude. One. Show enough. Huge. Yes. I think that's the biggest thing ever. Um, both, it, it kind of in two meanings, right? Um, one, attitude goes a long way. Um, your demeanor and facials and how you look as a dancer, right? If you have two dancers that are next to each other and they have the same level and the same training and the same choreography, right? Right. Um, and one of them has a stink attitude about right. it because they don't necessarily want to be there. It's going to technically look nice and it's going to look prepared, hopefully, and all that. Um, but if this one is loving it, of course, it's, different. it's going to bring it Come up a hundred. Yep. Come you on. can connect to that person. You can, you know, hopefully relate. You can see how much they love mm. it. You can it see that, their passion the for it. What is- it's, yeah, it's everything. It's it's energy. It's the fact that you appreciate that they're giving you something that they love, yeah, right? Yeah. It's like you vibe off of that so energy no. versus somebody who's technically is trained, just as trained and maybe just as beautiful as a dancer. Mm-hmm. Um, but if they don't show that love for it, it's going to look like a different level okay. and like a, it's a different ball game, so I no, think. Really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, last one real quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've been dancing for quite a long time. Yeah, it's been I'm, 20 years. I realized that it's been 20 years. Okay. I was like, I don't think I like that. I feel old. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm very curious to hear real quick. Tell me, you know, what are some right, you see, some things you've learned from dancing mm-hmm. that you're able to translate to your everyday life? Mm-hmm. Oh, gosh, that's so good. Um, work ethic. Okay. is one um we talked a little bit about that already yeah. but having that heavy work ethic because nothing's nothing nothing easy in life is going to come to you without work right, right, right. nothing worth having is going to be easy and nothing worth having is going to be handed to you. you're going to have to work for it yeah um i think dance has definitely taught me that yeah. um i think um it's taught me a certain amount of respect um because it's you know everybody has a different mental state that they're coming from mm. and everybody has a different place of life that they're coming from and when you get on a dance floor you have this mutual respect for each other hopefully um that kind of there's no 
like respect that there's no hierarchy in life there shouldn't be a hierarchy in life right we're all just trying to like be happy and live the damn thing and we like regardless of where we come from what money we have what we look like we we're all we should be the same playing field the same level right and so i think it's taught taught me like a tremendous amount of respect for for everybody Mm -hmm. who walks on the dance floor and for everybody who walks in life right um and so i think that like work ethic and respect more like than anything else um the third thing is just how to love life right yeah how to do um you know what makes you happiest in life whether it's dance or not dance it's like you got i I think you got one life um and you you have to you have to live it the the happier you are the happier your circle is the happier everywhere around you you know it's it's um it's the vibe is like I don't know. It's, it's a, infectious, right? It's infectious. Yeah. That's it. That's what it is. It tra- it's like a domino effect, right? And so um, the more joy you can spread, that goes to that next yeah. person, um, and it and it keeps going, yeah. keeps spreading. And so I think that, yeah, just living um, living your truth is what a lot of people say. Living what you love yeah. is going to help, regardless of you know what lo- walk of life yeah. you're in at that point. Yeah. yeah. Michelle, um, I really want to thank you for taking yeah. time today. Yeah. Yeah. Real, real was quick, uh, Debbie, real quick, tell me um, what are some of your upcoming events? My upcoming events. So um, next weekend, I will be in L.A. Okay, nice. I'm pretty excited for that. That should be really fun. Um, L.A. BKS. And then at the beginning of October, I will be teaching in Chicago that first weekend. Um, the second weekend of October, I'll be at the Toronto Salsa Congress. Nice. Um, and I think those are the next those are the next three events okay. coming up. Um, we're going to take a brief. Those are all solo trips. Okay. And taking a brief um, break to train the season two piece for Volante. Right, nice. Um, to choreograph that. Will be debuting hopefully in um, Chicago around February, March. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and real quick, real quick, how can people get in contact with you? How can they reach out to you? Oh, yes. Um, so the preferred way is through my website, um, michellegarciadance.com. Um, you can, whether it's teaching choreographies um, for my company, for me, privates, whatever it is, that's um, there's my email is linked there. You can also email me, which is really, really great, at michellegarciadance at gmail.com. Um, I do have like an, an Instagram. It's La Michelle Garcia. Okay. <laughs> so it's La and then an underscore um, Michelle Garcia. Um, quick fact about that is that when I was studying abroad, my host mom um, called me La Michelle. Okay. La um, Michelle. Yeah. Michelle. <laughs> yeah. So I t- kind of took it from that. Sure, um, yeah. So uh, those are kind of the best ways. I have Facebook as well under my regular sure, no. Michelle Garcia name. Hey. Yeah. When I, when I post it, I'll make sure I put all your information. So I cool. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So like I said, Michelle, thank you so much. Thank I you so much. This. Yeah. For hearing about me. Yeah. And... This was kind of an abbreviated episode, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I can, yeah. I can tell um. I can tell how passionate you are, you know, and how grateful you really are. So. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. I think this will be with this episode yeah. of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> see you on the dance floor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's all it is. Hey, everyone. Uh, if you made it this far to all the way to the end of the video, I want to thank you so much. Um, my overall goal with making these interviews and these episodes is uh, to give a voice to dancers, you know, to give them a platform to speak their story. So uh, if this is of value to anyone, then that, that means the world to me. Um, my overall goal is to give value to the dance community. So if you find no value in this, and I, I urge you to please let me know where I can improve on. Um, I I truly want to, you know, just uh, give value and content to to the dance community. Um, so please let me know how I can improve, where I'm messing up. Because to be a hundred percent honest with you, um, you know, I'm learning along the way as I do this. I, I truly am. So um, to be able to interact with, you know, the dance community, it means the world to me because it. It gives me feedback and it lets me know, you know, what I'm doing right, where I can improve upon, um, you know, what I'm doing wrong, which I feel like might maybe more important. Um, so please, if you all could could comment and just let me know what you think, it, it means the world to me because you know that feedback just helps me improve. So um, please comment uh, as well. You know, please like and subscribe. That means a lot as well. Um, but. You know, I want to say thank you so much for for just watching this because it means the world to me. Um, 
you know, I want to I want to take you on this journey with Two Left Feet Podcast. You know, I'm, I'm very excited for it. So, once again, thank you so much 